Edwin's Hammer of Knowledge Another episode of Edwin's Hammer of Knowledge Another re-record of Edwin's Hammer of Knowledge theme song Won't you sing along? Knowledge is a thing you have to acquire Learning about things from an elder round a fire He's the leader of the tribe Do what he says, you've got to hunt or gather Those are your choices when you're in a tribe You've got to hunt or gather Got to kill some things or gather some berries Or you go to the shops and you just buy those things yourself Hey, Salmonskins, and welcome back, or welcome in, or welcome. Uh, Welcome back if you've listened to it before. Welcome in if you are listening to this in a sort of a mind castle, and you need me to lower the drawbridge, open the portcullis, and make sure that all the alligators and crocodiles that coexist in the moat are fed, and they're not hungry for flesh when you fall in. If you fall in, I'll say when you fall in. I'm not going to make it uh, go out from underneath you like a James Bond villain. Bond, James Bond Jr. Remember James Bond Jr.? (laughs) What did he do? Uh, That was a cartoon series. Was that James Bond Jr.? That was like one of James Bond's illegitimate children? Or was it his nephew? I can't remember. I remember that being on television, but I watched it and now I have no memory of it as a grown man. But I remember the theme tune was Bond, James Bond Jr. Anyway, uh, why have I got Bond in the brain? Because it's just loads and loads of James Bond stuff because Daniel Craig's James Bond, uh, No Time to Bond Uh, where he fails to make a connection with any of his illegitimate children uh, over the course of two and a half hours. It's all set in one room, in a psychiatrist room, and James Bond is there drinking and uh, uh, smoking cigars and occasionally firing his Walter PPK into the padded ceiling. I don't know why the ceiling is padded, but um, it's an office, I suppose. And you know the way offices have those horrible kind of dirty padded tiles and you're sitting under a desk and you look up at it every day and slowly but surely a little stain starts to form and you think to yourself, what's up there? What's making that stain? Did a bird die up there or a rat? Or did someone who used to work here and left in a huff which is uh, an ancient Polynesian gown that people put on when they have to leave an office job and then they snuck back in because they still had the keys and they put a dead fish up there, Um, which makes sense because you wouldn't put an alive fish up there because it would flop around. I mean, it would eventually run out of uh, oxygen because it gets it from the water. There's a little fact for you in case you didn't know. Fish breathe water. Well, they don't breathe water. They breathe the oxygen that's in the water. I don't know. I will tackle that in my upcoming series of Edwin Salmon of Knowledge podcasts all about animals. Look out for that in the future as this podcast hurtles towards 100 episodes. Uh, If you've been with me from the beginning, as some people have, Jim from Scotland, Neil Murphy... Kevin and Leah, thank you so much, guys. Um, I love you. I appreciate you. And I hope you're still listening. I hope you're okay. Um, I am currently gathering a little package of things for Kevin and Leah. I'm sorry it took so long. But I want to say thank you so much for the little uh, wipes, the little, not bibs, but they're little kind of cloths that I use to mop up the excess milk on Luke's chin. And the excess drool now, because he's drooling like uh, the dog Hooch in the movie Turner and Hooch. 
which is now a Disney Plus television program. Uh, which, look, I'm I'm not going to watch it. Will I watch No Time to Die? No Time to Die. Um, no, Sean Connery's not in it. Uh, rest in peace. Daniel Craig, I was trying to figure out how old he was because he has that kind of sort of craggy, I think is the word that the tabloids would use. He's got a craggy face, a lot of crags in it. It looks like it needs an iron or it, it needs to be steamed. And I, I looked it up. I was going like, he must be, because he, he did the first one in 2006, Casino Royale, which to my money is one of the best James Bond movies, just because it's a good movie. It's kind of like uh, Jason Bourne uh, mixed with uh, that movie uh, Maverick with um, Mel Gibson and Jodie Foster where they play uh, poker and it's really exciting. And they play Texas Hold'em in Casino Royale and it's got that scene where he's like strapped to a chair and he gets his knackers knackered by Le Chiffre who is uh, played by Mads Mikkelsen, who's in a great movie that I recommend called Another Round. I think I recommended this before, kind of a black comedy, a Danish movie. Um, now, will I'm getting totally off track here. Will I go see No Time to Die? I think, you know, I kind of will because I feel bad for the Broccolis and for Michael uh, Wilson, the producer, and Daniel Craig and everyone involved because it's been delayed for so long and they spent so much money on it and they travel around the world and I think that was the appeal of James Bond in the beginning in the in the early 60s 62 was Dr No and you know they went to Jamaica and other locations but nowadays I think people you know they travel all the time traveling is kind of uh, easy easier, more affordable, and doesn't take, you know, you you don't go to America on a boat and it takes four months and some of your, you know, family members might not make the trip. It's very easy now. It's just like going up on a big bus. It's not as glamorous as it was. I mean, no, I've, I've personally have never lived in, a, in an age where traveling was glamorous. I only actually went on a plane in 2001 or was it 2001 yeah it was it was 2001 i went to see uh tim burton's planet of the apes the night before and then myself and my younger brother flew to amsterdam and uh i got very high on weed drugs and uh i've certainly never done that again but myself and Cara were thinking of going to see No Time to Die in the Stella Cinema, which is a kind of a fancy, it's kind of like the equivalent of, uh, you know, classy luxury flying in the 60s. Uh, but it's a cinema version of that where it's all, you've got your own little table and they've got little lamps and it costs more but uh, you get a, a better experience out of it. Because it's one of these things where if you're going to go see a movie in the cinema, you're not going to go see, you know, a marriage story, or you're not going to go see some sort of kitchen sink drama, even though, you know, you get the the uh, um, advantage of seeing the emotion on people's faces as they're in one room, you know, 20 feet tall. I want to see stuff like The Suicide Squad, which I did see. And James Bond, No Time to Die, seems like a movie to watch in the cinema. And they delayed it so long, like they had to release it in cinemas. They couldn't release it on streaming because it cost so much to make. And then it was costing them money not to release it because, you know, they don't really have anything else to release, as far as I know. So it's it's a long delayed thing. And it kind of makes me feel old because I remember when uh, Casino Royale came out and the whole uh, controversy over the casting of Daniel Craig, craggy Daniel Craig, who's kind of sexy uh, from certain angles and kind of, 
not sexy from other angles. And I remember him being in the movie Road to Perdition with Sam Mendes and Tom Hanks, and he played Paul Newman's, I think it was Paul Newman's last physical appearance in a movie. I know he did the voice of a car in the movie Cars, but he was in that, and Daniel Craig played his son, and he was kind of younger then. He was in his sort of uh, early 30s, and now he's 53, but he's not the oldest uh, James Bond because Roger Moore in A View to a Kill which featured the wonderful uh, duo of Christopher Walken I'm going to give him a view to a kill and Grace Jones uh, amazing Grace Jones who I saw performing live uh, at Electric Picnic and she was for one song, she was hula hooping a hula hoop uh, around her hips while singing a song and being topless. And she just looked like some sort of alien creature. She looked incredible. And it was a wonderful performance. It was kind of mesmerizing. Um, and she plays Mayday in A View to a Kill. And it's a funny one to watch if you've uh, if you've never seen it. It's fun, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of why James Bond is enjoyable. They're not particularly good movies, with the exception of Casino Royale, which I think kind of crosses over into this could be just a spy movie uh, about, uh, you know, because the bad guy in it is beholden to these other bad guys and he has to win the money or these bad guys are going to kill him and they're trying to kill him in the hotel you know in between uh, rounds of Texas Hold'em rounds another round please like I don't know how to play poker or kill a man or wear a tuxedo I don't think I've ever worn a tuxedo in my life maybe I could wear a tuxedo for my wedding I'm thinking of wearing sort of a dark green suit if there's anyone listening who uh, owns a suit company and wants to sponsor me and give me a suit for my wedding, that would be great because, uh, you know, it's expensive. Uh, not the suit, the the wedding. But if I could, you know, cut back on some expenses, um, that'd be great. So, no time to die. I don't know. Daniel Craig, some of the movies, Quantum of Solace was very bad, very bad title. I don't really remember anything about it. Skyfall, I know a lot of people uh, point out that it's like they just stole from the Dark Knight where the bad guy is disfigured and his plan is to get captured and there's even a bit where they're standing around a kind of a glass uh, cage that he's in in the middle of a room underground and it's a terrible use of space. It's right in the middle of this giant room and they could have put a few criminals in there but it's just for him. And then the end of it is like uh, Home Alone, but an extremely violent Home Alone where he sets up all these traps around his gaff and he has uh, Albert Finney as the caretaker who's just been basically waiting 40 years for James Bond to come back to his home of Skyfall. And originally he was going to be played by Sean Connery. Um, but then they decided against it. I don't know if they offered it. To, I don't think they offered it to him. I think they thought, uh, wouldn't this be fun if Kincaid was his name, if the janitor was played by Sean Connery? Welcome home, James. It's me, Kincaid. Uh, but they thought it would be too confusing because be like, why is James Bond there? And also James Bond is there. Or there two Bonds. And uh, then apparently they were going to have uh, Skyfall be like a retirement home for James Bond and have all the previous James Bond there, Roger Moore going, well, I just want a cup of cocoa. And uh, Timothy Dalton. And Timothy Dalton. Uh, he, he just says his own name a lot. And then Pierce Brosnan, Ireland's own Bond whose acting style is he's continually talking loudly 
as if he's at a disco that's happening in his brain. Where he talks like this, yes. Mmm. Golden eye. Mmm. Mmm. Bond. Mmm. James Bond. Mmm. He's constantly thinking about things as well. Mmm. I thought he was a great Bond. And uh, George Lazenby uh, was the other one who was j- just in one Bond. And he was okay, I guess. But, uh, yeah, so they were all going to be there. But then that was like, if you're going to have one Bond, to have all the Bonds in one room would just be far too confusing. So, uh, James Bond. Now, there has been a lot of talk about James Bond being a relic of the past, you know, even in some Bond movies. And I know some people, you know, when it comes around to Bond, and people go on about the sort of uh, the sexist nature of him. You know, he likes to shag women and then those women die when they're after they've been shagged and serve their purpose. Sometimes he doesn't ask for consent. Uh, you know, sometimes he's like having sex with the ex girlfriends of these bad guys. And people are complaining about the disfigurement thing with the bad guys. Like it's it's a trope in Bond that they're all kind of physically disfigured in some way. And that's making fun of people with physical disfigurements. But, you know, look, it's a movie. And Daniel Craig was asked, you know, the question, should there be a female Bond? And I think in this movie there is, uh, because James Bond is retired in No Time to Die. And I think he spends half the movie, from what I've garnered from some of the non-spoiler reviews, he spends half the movie walking around saying, I'm retired. And everyone going, ah, you're so old and out of touch. You're just an old craggy man. Why doesn't someone iron your face or steam your face or do something with your face? And there's a new 007 since he's retired. The 007 uh, spy number has been taken. I mean, there must only be like a dozen of these spies I guess it's a dangerous job, so they keep dying, I suppose. But uh, the new 007 is played by a woman of colour. And, of course, that has set the internet alight. Uh, But it seems to be, you know, commenting on those things within the movie. Because I know people were tweeting about, oh, you know, cancelled Bond and all this kind of stuff. And he's a tool of, of, uh, of oppression. And blah 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 and I say it's a movie so just fucking relax concentrate on the inequalities that are happening in real life brackets IRL close brackets and just shut up so uh, watch the movie if you will if I watch it of course I will give you a review but I will say this I like Daniel Craig uh, I like his physicality He's great in that movie, Knives Out. That's a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And uh, yeah, but he needs to iron his face. I ironed a bunch of shirts earlier on. First time I've ironed in a while. And ironing is one of those things that is just the worst thing for a lot of people. It's a necessary thing. I remember seeing a few hacks, ironing hacks. If you hate ironing, then do this. And I thought, yes, that's it. That's it for me. No more ironing for me. And one of the hacks was when you're having a shower, bring your shirts in and hang them up. And when you're showering, the steam from the shower will get rid of all the wrinkles. And I thought, perfect. But you know what? It actually didn't work. And then the other one was like boil water over an oven and hang them uh, hang your shirts and, and whatever you need uh, de-wrinkled. Hang them above the the boiling water and the, the steam will get rid of wrinkles. And that didn't work. I know my father-in-law has a device that Caro was telling me about, which is kind of like, uh, it's like an inflatable man thing with arms. And you put the shirt on it and you inflate it and it stretches out the, the shirt and that somehow gets rid of the wrinkles. But I don't think it actually works. It's just one of these 
you know, like we've sent men to the moon and we have done so many. We've got nanotechnology. We've got non-invasive surgery. We uh, we managed to not, you know, I'm saying we as a species. I didn't really have much to do with a lot of these things, if I'm honest. We managed to get a vaccine uh, for COVID-19 very, very quickly. Um which was amazing, and then everyone just started questioning it. And now, in America, ooh, getting a bit political, it's getting political! In America, I read that more people have died from COVID-19 than died in the 1918 Spanish influenza in America. But that is because 150 million people or thereabouts have not taken the vaccine, have not taken it into their veins, and I don't understand that. I mean, at least in this country, we have... I mean, look, we're a very small country, but 95% of the population of Ireland have been double-dosed. And I'd get another dose, if I'm honest, if it uh, if it stops me getting it. And who knows, I might have gotten it already. I mean, I was traveling, I was in Edinburgh, I was performing in rooms uh, to people... And, you know, people were approaching me, drunk English man uh, asked me to take a photograph of him and his friends. And then he went to hug me afterwards. And I just went, hey, man, plague. I said, oh, yeah, sorry, mate, forgot about that. Um, But he got very close and he wasn't wearing a mask. And who knows? Who knows? Not me. All I'm saying is, look, I think we're um, coming to the end of it it is october now in a year's time in just over a year's time i will be married and on our wedding day we're going to have a band and we're going to have all the guests and we're going to have a great time and all of this will be far behind us also lots of gigs are happening i'm doing uh gigs i did a gig out in dunleary and i stupidly wore just normal clothes like, everyone else is wearing normal clothes. I should have mentioned that during the gig. I should have been like, isn't it weird that we're all wearing pants again? Who likes pants? And they'd be like, way. And uh, I was, like, sweating. And I wore a hat. And I do sometimes wear a hat on stage. I don't know why I wore a hat that night, because I should have known with the lighting that the hat just cast a shadow over my eyes so someone took a photo of me on stage and I looked like some sort of you know off-season Santa Claus some sort of vagrant Santa going around uh, drinking in pubs talking about you know fucking oh December's an awful hard time for me you know busy busy I'm busy in December no busy 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 and hoping people would guess who I am but uh yeah I looked like a, a dark side Santa um, good, all the presents are falling into place. Soon the children will have a merry, merry Christmas. Ah, 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 I am Dark Side Santa. I still deliver presents, but I also kill elves for fun. Um, whoa, that got dark. So, uh, guys, uh, gigs. I'm going to try and record these gigs. I'm going to be announcing uh, a bunch of gigs. I'm going to be doing some work in progress gigs. I'm going to be saying the word gigs a lot. And uh, the work in progress shows will be somewhere in Dublin before the end of the year, probably next month. So I'm going to find a venue pretty quick and see what's shaking. And then early next year, I'm going to be going on tour again with some new material. And I tried out some new material. I obviously have had a baby recently, so I was trying baby stuff. And I was a little bit rusty on the baby material. I tried some of that in Edinburgh and it worked. And I was just trying to distill it down. That's what comedy is about, guys. A little bit of uh, comedy insight for you. It's distilling down an experience and sort of explaining it as succinctly and with as few words as possible. And I managed to do that uh, by trying to think about what it is to have a child, what it is, 
and what it am and what it can be. And basically, uh, on a very basic level, the job of being a parent and having a young baby, it's like being the personal assistant to someone who cannot do anything for themselves. You know, they can't even sit up, they can't talk, you have to feed them, they're not even going to hold uh, the bottle so they're being fed, and then they shit themselves, and you have to clean it up, and you're not getting paid. And actually, you've you've paid for everything, all the materials. It's like, the in some ways, it could be the worst job in the world. But, um, you know, that that kind of rang true with parents, and also with those uh, people who are not parents and probably don't want to be parents. And then I gave out about dog parents, and was saying, you know, I... Dog parents, you're not the parent uh, of anything until you've tried to wrangle it into a baby Bjorn and walk around with it strapped to your to your body. Because Luke sometimes gets a bit uh, antsy, a bit uh, wriggly, a bit grizzly, as we say, when we're trying to get him into the Bjorn. And I can't imagine getting, you know, a German shepherd into a Bjorn and walking around with it. I mean, you'd probably destroy your back. But it's not a thing. Being a parent of a dog is not the same as being the parent of a child. That's all I'm going to say. Hot take, guys. A hot, 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 hot take. And now we're going to take a few minutes to listen to some advertisements. Uh, You can skip through if you want. But if you do listen to these, you will get me an incremental amount of money. And unless you become a patron of Edwin Salmon of Knowledge, and you can do so for free, I think, or maybe the patron page doesn't exist because I've paused everything because I'm reorganizing it. But there will be a flat fee uh, that you will pay monthly. I think it's a fiver or something. You could do it for a month, um, which is just like buying me a cup of coffee. Um, and you can get lots of extra stuff. There's like a year's worth of additional material, uh, extra episodes, um, little video pieces, writings. Uh, the book that I'm writing is up there. I've read a few chapters of that. I might read another little bit of that in this episode. So stay tuned. Uh, if you don't want to become a patron, that's fine. If you just want to listen to this episode... Um, and not give me anything except your attention, then that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, I, you know, I appreciate your attention. Um, Thank you very much for listening. And we'll be right back after these messages. Hey guys, welcome back to this episode of Edwin Salmon of Knowledge. Thank you for listening, thank you for coming back, thank you for enduring those moments in your life where people try and sell you stuff. I'm not trying to sell you anything, I'm just trying to sell you the concept of a good time hanging out with me, talking about stuff. And one of the things I did, I've been out in the real world, it's great being out and about doing things, town is busy and hopping and I get to people watch and I get to sometimes do it up close uh, which, I mean, I think that's what working in retail is it's like getting paid to people watch up close because I remember working in a DIY store before I took up comedy full time I was working in a DIY store that I can't name for legal reasons but it's not home base B&Q and it rhymes with goodies. And I used to work there for 10 years on and off. And what I would do in the evening times, if I was on an evening shift, time would be slow. It would run a bit slow, and you'd need something to do. And, you know, you'd be facing off shelves and putting on white gloves and running your finger along the tops of the shelves and looking at the dirt on your finger and going and then never doing anything about it, pretending to be a a, a butler in a fancy uh, country estate home or a castle. 
And sometimes people would come in and I'd, you know, there'd be regulars who would come to me and sometimes they wouldn't be regulars, but they would be people who I would recognize. And there was a woman who would come in with her daughter and they just had a weird relationship. And I used to, and you, the, the mother was a little bit eccentric, I guess is the word I would use. And her daughter was anywhere from 35 to 52 she was kind of i don't know she she wasn't like there was something missing there was a want in her i think she you know kind of had her faculties but her sense of self had been sort of beaten down by being the daughter of this woman who was very very what's the word for it controlling or very i i just wondered what their home life was like but they'd take up a good half an hour sometimes 40 minutes and other people would avoid them and i'd be like i oh, know this is fine um and i was going to say i could get some material out of it but really you don't want to be sort of making fun of uh people's uh personalities i think you know they weren't like bad people they were just eccentric why am I telling you this? I don't know. It's because I've been out in the world and I have been doing stuff myself and Luke just yesterday attended a class which I was kind of a little bit dubious about at first when Cara mentioned it, signing him up for this class. Like we're doing swimming lessons um, next month, which is actually this month. In about uh, 10 days' time, we're doing some swimming lessons uh, we signed him up for. I am going to go and he will learn how to swim, which is something I don't know how to do. I know how to float, which I guess will save me from uh, from drowning. But uh, I'll just have to, you know, float around until someone comes and actually drags me out of the body of water that I have found myself in. And uh, Luke is going to learn how to swim because they have, they being babies, have a natural ability to breathe and to hold their breath underwater because, of course, they've learned it in the womb. They are lying around breathing oxygenated uh, fluid, just like the rat and Ed Harris in The Abyss. Uh, which was a real thing. They actually really did that. In the uh, in the director's cut extended version of The Abyss, they put a rat in this uh, fluid, this oxygenated fluid stuff, and he breathes. And they actually really did that. And it's like a real thing that exists. Um, I don't think Ed Harris did it. I think they just had like a kind of a fake uh, cavity in the front of his helmet. And he just pretended that he was breathing this stuff. So Luke will know how to swim from a very young age, which is uh, an advantage. And also, we went to this clap handies thing, where you sit around with other parents and you sing songs to your babies, and they get to kind of see other babies. And it was the first time that Luke was in a room with other babies, and we dressed them uh, all in white. He was wearing a white onesie, so he looked like some sort of uh, a member of a baby boy band from the 90s. Um, I want milk that way. Tell me why he changed nappies all day, day. Tell me why he clap handies when I say... I want it that way. Give me milk. And he looked like an angel baby. And he was fascinated with the other babies in the room. And we were doing, you know, rhymes and like uh, tickling. And then we did baby massage. And the lady running the class said, now you have to ask permission from your baby to give him a massage. And I thought, initially I was like, what? That's weird. I mean, he can't even really... He can only see, like, blobs. He's only just started seeing things in color. 
But then it does uh, teach you to, you know, ask permission. And it's, you know, you got to ask permission before you touch someone's thighs or feet, even if it's your baby, because Luke is a little individual person with his own wants and needs and privacy. Privacy is a big thing. People need their privacy. And I tell you what, he's going to need his privacy for sure when he hits his teenage years. He's going to need a lot of private time. I think you know what I'm talking about. But uh, I was a little bit disappointed, not with the class. The class was great and it was nice. And he did tummy time, which tummy time is like a baby spend a lot of time on their backs. They sleep on their backs. But in order to develop their uh, leg muscles and their knees and to help them towards uh, crawling, we put them on their tummies and they sort of push up with their with their arms and move their heads from side to side. And usually after about a minute, Luke gets extremely annoyed at being in tummy time time. And he starts to grizzle. But he was like just distracted by uh, all of the things that were happening and all the other babies. So he was about three minutes uh, on his on his tummy, uh, just checking out all the other kids in the room. And at one stage, we all broke into groups of three and we had this multicolored uh, sort of circular sheet and we held it over the babies and we sort of um, moved it round and they were like looking up like, oh my God, the colors, man. Like some sort of hippies at Woodstock after taking a big dose of acid. Um, you know, they looked fascinated and then uh, the lady running the class was going around with a little bubble machine. So it was like bubbles and multicolored flags and uh, cool music playing in the background. And I jokingly said to one of the other mothers, um, not that I'm a mother, one of the mothers there, uh, one of the two mothers in the three uh, parent group, I said, uh, God, we really are preparing them for their first ever music festival. Um, nothing. I thought it was a funny line. And then at one point, the leader of the group, the person uh, running the group, the elder um, of the tribe. Now, I was the only dad there, which made me feel like a cool dad. And all the other mothers are probably thinking, what a cool dad. And Luke was very well behaved. He didn't grizzle at all. One kid had to go out and get changed. And Luke had the common decency not to shit his nappy in front of company. So we've raised him well so far in the four months that he's been alive. So the group leader, a uh, group leader standing by, she took out uh, like a little fox puppet. And she was American, um, the leader of the group, not the fox. Um, cause it was just a puppet. And she said, uh, you know, and now we're going to talk to Mrs. Fox. How are you today, Mrs. Fox? And I expected some kind of, uh, you know, character to emerge. Uh, you know, I didn't expect her to be like Robin Williams, the a man of a thousand voices. I didn't expect that. But I expected her to maybe modify her voice, maybe just do a slightly higher version of her American voice. Like, I'm very well today. Thank you for asking. But she just did her own voice. So, like, I was like, you're not you're just talking to your hand with, you know, an animal on top of it. You're not creating a character. You're not weaving a rich tapestry uh, of a world for these children to lose themselves in. Some storyteller you are. And uh, I only say this because when I'm playing with Luke and just for variety and just because I like doing voices, so he has, like, an, an octopus called Ollie, um, who has like lots of uh, different tattoos of fish on his legs. That's that's what I've said anyway. Um, and he talks like Quint from Jaws. So he's kind of like, all right, chief, you got you got a, your baby. Huh? How's that working out for you? I'm an octopus. If you ever need a letter written, I got lots of ink. Um, and then there's uh, Benny the butterfly who I suspect is actually a moth 
but he won't admit it. And he's kind of like posh English. He's like, hello, old, old Mick. And he's a little bit sort of xenophobic when it comes to the Irish. Would you like a potato? Uh, I, I used to be a caterpillar, don't you know? He seems a bit drunk. But then my favorite one and the one that I always go to just because uh, I enjoy doing the voice is Hamish the Bear. Now, he's the only character who doesn't have an alliterative name. Um, I could have called him Bernard the Bear, but uh, I called him Hamish for some reason. And I don't know if the voice came first. And speaking of Robin Williams, the man of a thousand voices, he is now the man of 999 voices because I've stolen one of his voices for Hamish the Bear. Uh, and it's Mrs. Doubtfire. So Ham- you know, Hamish has that sort of very soft Scottish way of talking. And he's got a lot of, you know, oh, hello, dear. And oh, if there's love... Those are the ties that bind. And how are you getting on today? Do you have any poop in your pants? Um, do you want to chew on my leg? I've got no... I've got, like, arms, but I've got no claws. I've no fingers. I can't pick anything up. How do I survive? And I get into the nitty-gritty of these animals' lives. And this woman just didn't do that. And then... She just said hello to the fox and then like put it away. It's almost as if she was like, oh, they're not going for this. But I, you know, I was disappointed. I, I thought she could, I thought she could have done more. I'm Hamish the bear and I care about your child's development. I'm from Scotland. Bears don't really live in Scotland, it's confusing, but I care about your child. I'll make him clap hands, make him feel my legs. Don't worry, it's consensual, I've asked permission first. I'm Hamish the bear, and I care about your child's development. Look at my eyes, they're dead inside. Because I'm not real, I'm just a stuffed animal toy. Hamish the Bear there with his number one single, I'm Hamish the Bear. Guys, before uh, we go, just one last thing. I just want to read from something uh, that I got. I got an email. Uh, Now, it was in my my spam folder. I was clearing out my emails because I like to do an old clear out of emails because, you know, you you run out of space. And I discovered a blackmail email, uh, an e-blackmail that I had gotten that I didn't even know about. And it was very funny. I kind of, in some ways, I felt bad because it's the sort of thing that some people would think is absolutely 100% real and would be duped and pay money. But uh, someone just sent me this <laughs> random email. Um, I And it's like, uh, I, I took a screenshot of it. Now, not all of it, just the kind of funny parts of it. And when I was in Edinburgh doing gigs, I was reading out from the email i thought it was funny but maybe it's not as funny as i thought it was and also people don't really go to a comedy show to have someone just read out spam emails i mean look i could make it funnier but i just thought i'd share it here with you guys because uh it probably makes more sense on this podcast so someone was like, I've been like watching you, gathering information about you unbeknownst through your camera and through your microphone on your laptop machine. And uh, I'll just read from it. While gathering information about you, I have discovered that you are a big fan of adult websites. <sighs> dun, 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 dun. You really love visiting porn websites and watching exciting videos while enduring an enormous amount of pleasure. Yeah, it's true, guys. I like to endure pleasure. 
I'm like, oh, I've had so much pleasure here. Oh, it's horrible. I think I could probably endure a little bit more pleasure. Can you endure the pleasure? That's what I say to Kara whenever we're uh, having sexy times. I'm like, are you ready to endure an enormous amount of pleasure? It's just uh, ridiculous. And also, it's a sort of thing, it's like when you go to uh, a psychic medium and they say something like, oh, you're mourning someone who's died and this, this death has made you sad. This has been a sad death. It's like, yeah, like everyone know someone who's died and everyone to the for the most part watches porn even priests um i don't know if they do uh so you know that's obviously got my attention that this person knows that i've visited porn sites and then he continues well i have managed to record a number of your dirty scenes and montaged a few videos which show the way you masturbate and reach orgasms. So immediately I'm like, oh no, everyone will know my technique. I get two balloons and some olive oil. I mean, like, I've managed to record a number of your dirty scenes and montaged a few videos. Like, why would you montage me, you know, ejaculating a number of times? Surely you just need it once with my face in. And actually, if you are recording me on like through my camera to the camera on my laptop uh you know you're not going to see my dick you're just going to see my face which i suppose is probably more embarrassing because if you were just if it was just like a video of my penis at least you could have like plausible deniability you know it's like when <laughs> i've ever reading something before which was about unsolicited dick pics which are the majority of dick pics that are sent through the internet to people. It's not like people are like, you know, going, where are those dick pics that I solicited? And, you know, complaining to whoever is sending out the dick pics. But someone was saying, don't ever send a picture of your own penis. Uh, Google image search penises. Pick one that, you know, looks like yours and send that. I was like, okay, one that looks like yours, but is maybe a little bit bigger or something. And like, then you're just, I don't want that in my search engine. I suppose you could go incognito, uh, incognito mode, which is like, uh, it's like you, but you're wearing a big coat. Um, so the blackmail email, the e e blackmail continues. If you have doubts, as in doubts, not just doubts in general. If I doubt that this person has recorded me and my fabulous technique that I'm hoping to copyright, and this guy's going to do me out a lot of money. If you have doubts, I can make a few clicks of my mouse and all your videos will be shared to your friends, colleagues and relatives. (gasps) I also have no issue at all to make them available for public access. Public access? Who would watch that? then I guess, comma, you really don't want that to happen, comma, considering the specificity of the videos you like to watch, comma, brackets, you perfectly know what I mean, close brackets, it will cause a true catastrophe for you. I'm guessing English is not this person's first language. Um, the specificity of the videos you like to watch, and then you perfectly know what I mean. Oh no! Like, he's not saying what videos I like to watch. I mean, like, what's my top five? Um, You know, I'm not like, I'm not going to tell you guys. But basically, I've watched every single category of porn. Nautical porn, biblical porn, chewing gum porn. I've watched it all, guys. Um, And I don't care who says it. And like, I frame this as a, as a stand-up bit by saying, I'm just getting ahead of the story, guys, before it breaks. Before the Sun newspaper or the Star or one of the red tops says uh, Ed Salmon in internet wank shame or, you know, Ed Salmon in self romp uh, orgy shame. They're always going on about romping in like no one ever has sex or has it off 
or fucks. It's always like romp, romp shame. I've never romped. The last time I romped, I was a child in a romper suit, romping around. It had nothing to do with sex. Um, let's settle it this way. This is it. Now he gets to the, here we go. What do you want? You transfer 1,650 US dollars to me in Bitcoin equivalent, according to the exchange rate at the moment of funds transfer. And once the transfer is received, I will delete all this dirty stuff right away. After that, we'll forget about each other. Mate, I've already forgotten about you. You're in my spam. I also promise to deactivate and delete all the harmful software from your devices. Trust me, I keep my word. Yeah, I'm going to trust the word of someone who is uh, who claims to have installed software uh, on all my devices. And now you're going to delete them. Yeah, this is a fair deal and the price is quite low considering that I have been checking out your profile and traffic for some time by now. In case you don't, if you don't know how to purchase and transfer the bitcoins, you can use any modern search engine. Thanks, mate. I'll bloody Google search how to pay bitcoin. And also, I sometimes can't get my uh, streaming dongle uh, to stream from my phone. I don't know, like, you know, I only found out how to take a screenshot on my laptop the other day. And you think I'm going to figure out how to do 1650 US dollars in Bitcoin equivalent? Get fucked, whoever you are. Now, as of today, this was sent, a, you know, a while ago, a couple of months ago. You know, I never would have found it if it wasn't for me clearing out my uh, Gmail. But look... None of these videos have appeared on the internet, but if you see a video of me, uh, you you know, gurning and uh, blowing up balloons, then you'll know you'll know what it is, guys. Uh, but you know, I've I've already told this everyone now my method, and uh, I hope this will be the end of it, and I hope I won't have to end up throwing my laptop in a lake. So, guys, this has been Edwin Samuel of Knowledge. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, I have Luke Patoot here with me. Luke, you want to say hello to everyone? No, he's grizzling. He is a little bit hungry, so I'm going to go off and feed him. Thanks so much for listening, guys. If you can spare a couple of minutes to give me a review, that would be wonderful. Uh, if you don't want to give me a review, that's also fine. But I'll just take a minute. Here's the review. Five stars. Ed's great. Love the show. Keep up the good work. And guys, I will be back very, very soon with a special episode, which will conclude the Baby Detective show that I have been making up for the last while. I keep leaving these things hanging. Like I left uh, love notes hanging in space. But I will have a conclusion to the season. And I'll have a regular episode very soon. Thanks guys for listening. Take care of each other and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.